Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Chavis. I'm the pastor of Church Online. I say this every week, but we are located online at churchonline.com. But we spell that differently. We spell it C-H-R-C-H because we say all that's missing is you, churchonline.com. This morning, it seems as if I'm looking everywhere and we've turned from October, November, and it seems as if everyone is gearing up to Christmas. Tell me that you haven't noticed this. The stores, everywhere you look, in fact, yeah, some of the stores, it seems like we've been gearing up to Christmas since July, but except for maybe the grocery stores and Cracker Barrel, most people are forgetting what comes in between, Thanksgiving. This morning, I just wanted to encourage you, number one, we're going to spend time in giving thanks, of course, but I just want to encourage you, don't pass Thanksgiving. It seems as if now it's almost become this throwaway holiday, just a little something in the mix there that we do. And we almost forget about it. We almost pass it by. But I've decided that during the month of November, every Friday, when you join me here on Battleground, I'm going to give you a reason to give thanks, a biblical scriptural reason to give thanks. But I could tell you that Thanksgiving is so instrumental in our faith, so paramount to everything that we do. And I want to tell you, it also changes your attitude. I promise you that if you could spend more time in giving thanks to God, it would change everything. Now, I personally love Thanksgiving because it is one of the few holidays that maybe that's why advertisers and and stores move right to Christmas is it's just not as commercial. We can't make quite as much out of it, again, except for the grocery stores and Cracker Barrel. Thanksgiving, though, is so important to us. And one of the reasons that we'll look at first is Jesus. Jesus had a lifestyle of giving thanks. Let me read just a couple of verses. Matthew eleven twenty five. This is as he's teaching. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father. Hear those words. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes, to little children. Before the feeding of the multitudes, he said, John 6, 11, Jesus took the loaves when he had given thanks he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples and those sitting down and and likewise the fish as much as they wanted. Even before he did a miracle, raising Lazarus from the dead, one of the most incredible miracles, it says John eleven forty one. Then they took the stone from the place where the dead man was laying, Lazarus, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Jesus showed us the way of thanksgiving. And this is just a couple of examples. It's over and over and over again in the Gospels, Jesus thanking God. Now, I recognize that some of this is part of the Jewish tradition. For example, the the feeding of the 5,000, it says he broke the bread and he gave thanks. That's very much a part of their tradition. Before you eat anything, you give thanks. But it was part of Jesus's makeup and part of his life. Like I said, in his teaching before his miracles, he's giving thanks. So if we are going to be followers of Jesus, then thanksgiving should be something that we are just about all the time, not just on a holiday. But as I said, thanksgiving is one of those holidays that we set aside. And I would say even families that have no faith at all, We'll spend a few minutes giving thanks. What are you thankful for today? What are you thankful for? And we say thanks, even though in so many cases we may not know who. And and in fact, that may be one of our greatest open doors to evangelism is talking to people that we know who don't know Jesus and ask them, what are you giving thanks for? And then the big question, to whom are you giving thanks because I know that'll stop a lot of people, but it also make a lot of people say, well, I'm, I'm giving thanks to God. Let me give you another scriptural example. So number one scriptural example, Jesus gave us the example. And if we're going to be followers of Jesus, we want to do things the way Jesus did. But here's a great one. This is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. The Apostle Paul, backside of Thessalonians, he's telling them some 
practical things they need to do. This is how you live your life for Jesus. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17, he says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Oh, you can't miss that. In everything give thanks. The Apostle Paul writing to this church and, and he's saying everything, the good, the bad, <laughs> the ugly, give thanks in everything. And notice the second part, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Jesus gave us the example of a life of thanksgiving. The Apostle Paul says thanksgiving is, at least in part, what the will of God is in our lives. So many of us, we want to know that, right? We want to know what God's will is for us. What's God's will for us in this situation, in this decision? But I don't know if we've considered that before. No matter what, giving thanks. Again, in the process, like there are people on our prayer list today that are going through medical struggles. This may sound really challenging, but are we giving thanks in everything? I promise you that even if we've been given that diagnosis, there's something to give thanks for. We could give thanks that we have a doctor. We're in a place where we can receive good medical care. Oh, because you got to know in the United States, we've got some of the best. We can always give thanks in that. But then maybe even in this challenge, this struggle that we may be suffering through, we can also give thanks in the struggle for the struggle, because that is the thing that God does as he is molding and shaping us. He brings us to these places and we just need to thank him, give thanks in everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We always think of giving thanks for the good. I don't know if we ever give thanks for the not so good, for the difficulties, the challenges. But again, if we read the scripture, that's how we are being grown, molded, and shaped is through the challenges of life. So I want to encourage you. I don't know what you're doing this morning, but just stop for a moment. I'm going to pause here and we're going to switch gears and we're going to pray as we always do on Fridays. And I want to begin right there. What do you have today to give thanks for? I promise you there's something. Maybe you're having a really tough day. Maybe you're being challenged today. Maybe financial struggles, medical problems. Maybe there's something that's really weighing on you today. You can give thanks that God is doing something with it. I promise you that. And then if not that, just thank God for what you do have right there. Today, as I'm sitting in my office, I'm, I'm thanking him. I'm thanking him. I have the ability to do this. I'm talking to you over the radio, and I'm sitting a thousand miles away. Okay, a couple of hundred miles away, and I could still bring the light of Jesus Christ. I'm thanking God because I can look out the window. I could see my neighborhood, and I'm thanking you thanking God for that. I've got a car in the driveway. I got a roof over my head. There is so much to be thankful for.